Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Thank you once again for joining me here on Truth in History. I pray that whatever I say will be a blessing to you. It will be an enlightenment to you. Maybe it would uh, even scare you. Um, but we must come to the realization that as a nation we are in trouble with the Holy God, Yahweh Himself, the God of Heaven, and the God of the Bible, and the Jesus of the Bible, not the Jesus of the New Gospel, not the Jesus of the liberal uh, making or composition. No, we are in trouble with the God of the Bible. And in the book of Psalm, chapter number 2, is our, is our theme verse, or verses, for this series entitled, The End of Christian America. Verse 1, Psalm chapter 2, Why do the heathen rage? Why do the people imagine a vain thing? It says, The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. Well, in this case, I'm going to apply it to the authorities in our country. You see, there's different areas of authority. There's church authority, civil authority, parental authority, church authority, and educational authority. So you have the educational institution. Why have they set themselves against God? Why has our, why has our political system turned its face against the Lord God Almighty? And everybody has to be politically correct. And a politician who has any nerve or any uh, guts to say something that is correct, then he always has to apologize for that. We have lost our statesmen, and we send to Washington just a bunch of politicians. And why did the heathen rage? Why did the people imagine a vain thing? Why does our judges rule unjustly? Because the people love to have it so. But we, as the body of Christ, have been given a mandate to cry out against the wickedness in our land. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17, the Lord is giving Ezekiel a charge. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Now, Jeremiah gave the people of Judah warning. Ezekiel gave them warning. But it's very obvious that they did not heed the warning because the Babylonians came over, captured the land of, or the city of Jerusalem, 
and took the people captive. That is proof right there that they did not heed the warning. But yet it was the obligation laid upon Ezekiel and Jeremiah to give warning to the people. Where are the modern, present-day Ezekiels and Jeremiah's? In the church world today, we have pastors, we have CEOs, we have executives or executives, we have all types of ministry, but where is the ministry of the prophet? The prophet's chair in the body of Christ today is empty. I don't mean a so-called prophet for profit, prophesies for money, or says, come and let me lay my hands on you, because really most of that just amounts to laying hand, empty hands on empty heads. But where are the Elijahs of God to cry out and say to Ahab, Thou art the one that troubleth Israel. Thou art the one that has brought the sin, allowed the sin, legalized the sin, have tried to take the sting out of sin, but yet sin still has its sting. We Americans, our nation, going back, well, at least a hundred years, at least a hundred years, is a controlled society. I want to give you, point out some some history here. First of all, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? That's Psalm 11, 3. But at the turn of the century, from 1900, from, from the 1800s into the 1900s, Coming into the 20th century, America was facing five different ideologies that have actually completely turned our nation, our culture, the mentality of the people upside down. Number one was communism. Now, Marxist socialism. They, it advocates the theory that the capitalists have enslaved the working class and urges the working class to rise up in violent revolution and set up a planned economy and the government would own all property. And these days, not only physical property, this table, this house, this piece of land, but they would own the minds of the people. The Karl Marx, raised in a Jewish home, and enacted or wrote his Das Kapital and long before 1900. So the ideology of communism was working in the 1850s. And would you believe that Karl Marx was writing articles in the 1860s concerning our American, quote, civil war, and sending them to Horace Greeley, and Horace Greeley of the New York newspaper was buying these articles and publishing them because 
Horace Greeley and Karl Marx were of the same mentality, and these articles were against the South. So, the Russian Revolution or the Communist Revolution, 1917, 1918, the hotbed was already there. The philosophical, ideological bed had already been, had been laid. And they finally, through arms, conquered Tsarist Russia. And the communist, the insurrectionists that invaded Tsarist Russia, do you know where they came from? Do you know where they were trained? They were Jewish revolutionaries trained in the Lower East Side of Manhattan in New York. Check your history books. After I said this one time, one lady called up and she was mad as a wet hen. She was calling me all kinds of names. But this is history, folks. I didn't make this up. But until the American Christian and until the American conservative, so-called conservative, the so-called anti-communist in this country realizes the root of communism, they will never do anything except beat the branches of the tree and never cut down the root. Never even get to the trunk of the tree. We must recognize that communism makes man an animal. Karl Marx, a social and political theorist, Satan himself must have inspired that man to write Das Kapital and Communist Manifesto. Number two, the second humanistic philosophy that invaded America and was present at the turn of the century, the 20th century, was organic evolution. And the book, The Origin of Species and the Descent of Man by Darwin, Charles Robert Darwin. It perverted the sanctity of the origin and destiny of man and made man nothing but a product of an amoeba that came out of the slime of millions of years ago. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 1. However, He did it. Was it a big bang? It was probably a big bang. But the Lord created the earth and all substance out of nothing. Because in Him was light, and the first creation of this universe was light. Well, Organic evolution, now taught in our schools as scientific proof that man evolved. And it's still in our schools. The third one, psychoanalysis. Written, purported, by a man by the name of Sigmund Freud. He was an Austrian Jewish physician, and he wrote three contributions to the theory of sex in 1905. It perverted man's moral responsibility to God. 
In other words, you're just nothing but a sexual animal. You do what you want to do. Do whatever feels good. And this philosophy became prominent in the hippie revolution. Folks, I am giving you the philosophical, theological, psychological attack upon America in 15 minutes. These are huge subjects because these men rule America from the grave. Karl Marx, Charles Darwin, Sigmund Freud, I want to talk about him a little more later on. The fourth one is racial equalitarianism. And it was promoted by Franz Boas, German American Jewish cultural anthropologist, or man that studies the habits the motivation of mankind. It perverted God's law of racial integrity and genetic preservation. That's what it did. You see it all around us. It, now it's taken on a different form of political correctness. Folks, the church world seems to be totally ignorant of the devices of Satan that have come against us. So therefore, when I say these things, I appear as an extremist. But I'm telling you the truth. This man, Franz Boaz, still rules America with these other men from his grave. But nobody is listening. Nobody cares. And the fifth philosophy, humanistic philosophy, that has pervaded America is biblical textual liberalism. In other words, when Brooke Foss Westcott and Fenton John A. Hort began to change the Scripture, they started a slippery slope, a slippery slope that we're still on today. Now there are not only a dozen different translations, but there's paraphrases. Well, a paraphrase is just the thoughts of a man taking the Scripture and putting down his own ideas. And some preachers, unfortunately, gospel preachers, have taken the Bible the King James Bible, and put their notes right in the text. That's a disgrace. King James would turn over in his grave. He said, don't do that. That's spiritual audacity. That's a religious spirit that says, my thoughts are just important as the Scripture. How a man would have the audacity to put his notes right in the text of the verse and even divide up the verse with his thoughts printed in a different color of ink. I was shocked when I saw that advertised 
on television. This is God's Word. Let the Holy Spirit of God interpret it. Notes in the margin is one thing. We can kind of tolerate that, sort of. But you take the Schofield Bible with all his notes concerning prophecy, has perverted, has perverted the understanding of the 70 weeks and the book of Revelation. Absolute perversion from A.C. Gabeline and Schofield, Clarence Larkin, and others, John Nelson Darby, they're all dead. They rule religion. They rule Christian prophecy in most part from their grave. And the church, men that have the alphabet behind their name, don't have enough integrity to do the research and find out. the terrible thing that those men did to the interpretation of biblical prophecy. God help us. You may say, preacher, is anything good? Anything right? Look at our culture. Look at our politics. Look at our Congress. Look at our courts. Look at uh, our schoolhouse, our church house. We're in bad shape, aren't we? We're in bad shape. God help us. It appears as though from Psalm chapter 2 that this is a repeat, that the kings of the earth, in other words, the authorities, the rulers take counsel against the Lord. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. A conspiracy of who? Of Satan? I want to read you a short letter that one of our viewers sent to us. I didn't write this. She wrote it. And I'll leave one part out because the networks may not like it. She said, I was at St. George's Episcopal Church for last year's Christmas Eve service. It is located in city state. The priest actually literally tripped and stumbled on the steps to the podium and almost fell on his face as he climbed up the wrought iron steps and railing to deliver his sermon. He is an older man, and the speaking platform is quite elevated, a very old New England church, and luckily he just was able to catch himself holding onto the railing. I was sitting in the front, and the man serving at the altar actually gasped as I was holding my breath when he tripped. After I heard the blasphemy in the sermon and complained to the deacon, I also told him I believed his tripping on the steps was a warning from Almighty God not to go forward and speak as he had planned to endorse and equivocate, make equivalent, the Koran to the Bible and dishonor our Lord right in the house of the Lord Jesus Christ and on the eve of the celebration of His birth. What followed? was horrendous. He praised the Koran and said there was more in the Holy Koran about the birth of Jesus Christ than in the Bible. And he told everyone Mary should be called by her real name, Miriam, 
as more accurately accounted in the Koran, and so refer to her as Miriam throughout his entire sermon. And then, after the sermon, after the service was over, she approached the deacon and voiced her concern. And he told her that she was not loving her enemies and not following Christ. Now, New England was the very center, the very heartbeat of Calvinistic religion in America in colonial days. Now, that place is less religious than the rest of the country. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, if that light within you be darkness, how great is that darkness? If that light within you, see the light of the gospel in New England, gone out and has become very dark. And here's another point that may shock you or make you agitated with me. But this song called the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which so many people love and it's got this wonderful tune, do you know that was written by uh, Julia Ward Howe? Julia Ward Howe. She made the statement, I denounce the New Testament. I denounce my Puritan religious roots. And concerning John Brown, that insurrectionist, she said, the gallows of John Brown will be as glorious as the cross of Christ. But yet, that is sung in our churches. Ignorance is the reason. Let's do our homework. Let's study our history. Because the Bible tells us that knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of our times. Folks, God is angry with America. I'm convinced. Let's get ready. Repent and live a godly life because Jesus Christ is coming again. And boy, is He angry with our sin. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in History, where the Word of God is not bound.